Good evening, Brave Nation. We're so excited to join you tonight. This is another one of our monthly Facebook Live episodes. We have a guest here with us tonight, uh, Mr. Chuck Ryan, the principal at Community High School. We want to just ask Mr. Ryan a couple of questions about our bullying committees. We have been uh, facing with some bullying concerns and, and established uh, committees within the district made up of parents to address some of the issues and concerns. So tonight, Mr. Ryan, can you tell us what some of the issues are um, that came out of those committee meetings? What did we hear about from our parents? Absolutely. Thank you for having me tonight. Uh, so we talked about cyberbullying, uh, emotional support uh, with teachers, um, dealing with disruptive behavior, transparency in our discipline process, uh, and increasing monitoring in our hallways and on our buses. Great. What um, suggestions did the parents that are on that committee, what did they tell us would be things that we could do to help eliminate some of those problems? So our committee was great. They just had a lot of good things that really came out of our meeting. Uh, we talked about a buddy system, um, a buddy bench for our elementaries, uh, monthly focuses, um, again, um, sharing our transparency as much as we can in the discipline, um, training for our staff, seminars for parents uh, and for students. Good. Good. Sounds like they were very productive meetings then. What do you think are the next step for our district? What are we going to do now that we have identified the issues and come up with some suggestions? What's our next step? So in our next committee meeting, we're going to take some of the suggestions that the parents have talked about um, and bring uh, what we've been able to implement to the committee, share some more information with them, talk about our discipline process and, and how that works and give them some more insight into that. Uh, we're also looking at our educational survey uh, and looking at the things that we have implemented and how have those affected, uh, how, how we, what have we seen improved uh, from the things we put in place. Okay. And we want to say just as a district that um, we want to address these issues, but remember that we cannot address things that we don't know about. So the most important thing that we want you to know is that you have to let us know when there are concerns or problems. All of our principals have their contact information out there, so please feel for, please feel uh, free to contact them anytime you have a concern. Um, Mr. Ryan, is there anything else you'd like to add about the bullying or the committees and the work that we're doing? Uh, you know, I just really appreciate our parents, and we really want to partner with them. Um, and, and you know, we want the same things. And, and just to echo what you said. Um, we always want to know when there's issues. We always want to investigate. We take any report of bullying or discipline issues serious. And we always want to look into those things. Um, we are looking at, at the high school specifically, we're adding a truancy and safety monitor um, to increase with monitoring and those things there. And so um, we're really trying to take uh, suggestions that the parents are getting for all the campuses and, and improve and get better. Awesome. We're going to have a time later tonight when you'll be able to ask questions. So if you have questions, please put them in the comments um, on Facebook and then we will address those. So we might have you come back a little later, uh, Ms. Ryan, to answer any questions that come up. But we appreciate you being here tonight and appreciate all you're doing to, to help us yes, with this problem. Thank you for Thank your you. support. So I want to talk to you a little bit about another issue that we have in the district, and I think it needs to come with a little bit of explanation about attendance. So when we talk about attendance, you hear a lot from the school district about average daily attendance, or we refer to it as ADA. So ADA is the average number of students who attend the school during the year, and it has to do with how many days are actually here. It's different than enrollment and it's different than what the state looks at. So the state looks at the number of kids that we have enrolled and then looks at the number of days those particular kids come to school to determine what our average daily attendance is. And then that average daily attendance is put into a formula to determine how much money the state sends our school to function, to be able to pay our personnel, to be able to buy materials and curriculum for our district. And so it's a very important number and we stress attendance on all of our campuses. 
What I want you to understand this year is coming out of a COVID year, there was a tendency that we got a little bit lax because we had a safety net there that could help us with that virtual instruction. This year, without that virtual instruction, we're seeing a, a decrease in our average daily attendance that we're reporting to the state. Our budget this year was built on a 92% attendance rate for our district overall. Right now we're trending around 88% attendance rate and that translates to over millions of dollars that could be reduced in our state funding formula. So I'd just like to uh, partner with all the parents tonight to give you some information about how important attendance is. The number one priority, the number one reason we want your child here is because of their education. Uh, we can't teach them if they're not here and so we really want to encourage them to be here every day. And the second part of that is that by your child being here every day, you give the district the opportunity to do more things with hiring personnel and having all the materials and the opportunities that we can provide for your students. So we ask tonight that you would join us in a campaign this year to raise our attendance rate to be the very best that it can be. If you have any questions about that, make sure that you jot those down and, and, and let us know what those are and we'll answer some of those questions a little bit later tonight. Tonight, we also have another guest joining us. We have Mrs. Seawright, who is the counselor at McClendon Elementary, and she is going to come tonight and answer some questions for us, specifically about our SEL program. So as we start talking about this tonight, Ms. Seawright, I just want to ask you first, can you tell us what is SEL and why is it so important to our educational um, setting? Sure, so SEL stands for Social Emotional Learning, and it's a mythology that helps students of all ages be uh, better at comprehending their emotions and their feelings, and demonstrate empathy for others. Um, these are learned behaviors that when they're used to help students make positive, responsible decisions, create frameworks to achieve their goals and build positive relationships with others. So a little bit goes beyond just character ed Absolutely. into really some life Lifelong lessons. Lifelong skills that they can awesome. use in their work field in their future. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so do we have a curriculum here at Community ISD? Yes. As part of, in the spring, we had a CISD vision committee. Um, and so we created a plan and we are going to implement SEL curriculum this fall. Okay. So stay tuned for information when that's going to roll out, what that'll look like, and we'll post it on our um, social media and on our website as well. Great. So when we start that program, if I were a parent, what could I expect my kid to come home talking about? Sure. What would be things they would be learning through this program? So there's all kinds of topics they'll learn. Um, some of the ones that they'll cover are mindset and goals, um, recognizing bullying and harassment, self-awareness, responsible decision-making, managing relationships, and how to deal with um, conflict with, with peers, and character development. So thank you so much yes, for the information. Yeah, thank you for having in, me. In addition to um, this curriculum that we're bringing in, something to enhance, we also have our Traits of a Brave that we spend a lot yes. of time on on all of our campuses. And this will be uh, more support for that and more details yes, on definitely. how to show those Traits of a Brave. So thank you so much. And yes. if we have questions, we'll call you back okay. over to thank answer a few questions. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight also uh, about enrollment and the growth in the district. This is a really hot topic. I was in a, a meeting today with seven other superintendents and administrators from other districts and I think all of this area is seeing just a huge growth in enrollment uh, across the state and so we talk about our enrollment and what has been projected to us. We were projected to hit 3,300 students by 2023. Currently, as of today, our enrollment is 3,343 students. So we have surpassed that, uh, that prediction that was given um, by two years. So as we're doing that, we're having to make some adjustments. Uh, we've opened the former EDGE building as a fourth and fifth grade center which for McClendon. We have added the capacity of eight new classrooms at the high school, but we're still seeing capacity issues as we're um, enrolling more and more students every day. We've had less than five days since we've started school that we haven't grown in some way on some campus, so we're continuing to see, see that growth. 
Last week, we had one campus that enrolled 18 kids in one day. It was a, a huge growth uh, for that campus, and we had to shuffle really quickly to make sure we had the space for all of those students. As we start talking to our demographer and looking at what is projected in the years to come, we actually have a projection of 800 to 1,200 houses projected every year within our district for the next 10 years. So that will um, average us about one student per every two houses. And so we could end up with over 6,000 kids by 2025-26. So the problem with that is figuring out where we're gonna put all those kids and, and what personnel is going to be here to support them and to help in their education. So the demographer met with our administrators last week and, and made a statement that it's not a matter of if the growth will happen, but instead how fast it will happen. Because right now it's happening at an unprecedented rate, a rate that was not predicted by um, anyone that's studying this growth. So as we move forward, we're going to talk about some of the things that are going on in the district and where we're going to make some adjustments. We will be opening our new elementary in Magnolia um, in Josephine next year. So that will help with some of the spreading um, of our elementary students. We'll have new boundary lines drawn at that point. So that will be adjusted. But as we look at those boundary lines, we're also gonna look at what's gonna happen in the future so that we're not having kids shuffle year after year um, so we will have to get a plan for what we're going to do with facilities. The school board is meeting on October um, the 18th and the 19th. The 19th will be a workshop where they will hear from the demographer and they will start to talk about what we're going to do to be able to house um, the students that we're getting. This year alone, we've grown between 600 and 700 students um, just from last year. And we have our campuses are built for around 750 students. So we've basically grown a whole campus just in this one year. So as we move forward, we will be looking at what are the solutions and what do we need to do to make sure that all of our students have the facilities that they need to be successful in their education. So please stay, stay tuned um, to news about our growth. The district will be putting some information out and we will continue to keep you informed and up to date with, with where we are in growth. Um, we are expected, the demographer told us, we could probably expect a little bit of a leveling off on the secondary campuses by uh, midterm, by the semester, but he felt pretty certain that our elementary campuses would continue to see growth and the trend that we're seeing right now throughout this year. So we will not be able to wait till next year to start making decisions and adjustments, we'll, but we'll have to make some adjustments as we move through this year as well. So stay tuned. If you have any questions, we would be happy to answer answer anything that you have. We'll um, roll those questions out in just a few minutes. But before we do that, we also have a third guest with us tonight. So I'm going to ask that Coach Manus um, join me here. Coach um, Justin Manus is the Director of Athletics for Community ISD and just brought him on tonight so that we could talk a little bit about athletics and sure. get some information. So if you would just start with telling us a quick update on how volleyball and football are going and maybe a little bit about cross country too. Just sure. what, what's sure. going on. I would, I would love to do that. First of all, I'd like to say that a lot of people don't know, but our football, volleyball, cross country teams have been practicing since August 2nd. So they've been going three weeks before anybody else even stepped on campus. So a lot of work has been put into what they're doing right now. Currently, our uh, boys football team is four and two overall, one and zero in district, with a big one on Friday against Sunnyvale. Uh, they won uh, forty-one to seven the other night at Wills Point. It was a, a great game to watch. Uh, our volleyball team is currently two and six in district, but with a four-game home streak coming up, and they're in a district to where. Winning one here, one there could put them into vying for a playoff spot. So we're wishing the best for them. In fact, they're playing Kaufman right now, so it's it, it's probably a barn burner. So uh, we're, we're hoping that they, that they get the wins that they need in order to get in the playoffs, because once they get there, you never know what will happen. Now, cross country, cross country, both our boys and girls teams have qualified for the regional meet. Amazing. It's the first time it's happened since 2008. We've had several kids on both sides, boys and girls, who have set records, and uh, they are really on a roll right now. They actually have their uh, their regional meet 
in Arlington on October 26th. And so I, I know it, their times are kind of uh, strange when they run, but if anybody is a cross country fan, uh, we'll be happy to get some information to them on how they can get there and where it's at and what time they should expect the kids to run. That's awesome. Yes, ma'am. What should um, our parents do if they want their students to, to be able to participate in athletic events uh, next year? So I think the biggest thing is just communicate. Our, our coaches have emails. They can email me. Uh, you know, there's some specific things that they'll need to get done. You know, every kid has to have physical paperwork. UIL physical paperwork is a requirement. We also have some other type of uh, UIL paperwork that needs to be filled out. That isn't really time consuming. The biggest thing is getting that physical. Now, if it's a student coming in from another district, there's other paperwork such as a PAPF, which is a previous athletic participation form. And we have to have that from the uh, previous school in order for them to be eligible here. So really it's just show us you have some interest, talk to the coaches, see what the coaches have available. And uh, you know, whatever sport it is, I'm sure our coaches would be happy to talk with them about it and give them whatever they need in order to, uh, to be a part of our athletic program. Good. And, and they can start participating in district athletics in the seventh grade. So I'm sure we're going to get information out to those sixth graders at the oh, end of the Oh, you bet, you bet. At, at, at the end of the year, any tryout information, okay. uh, we try to do our physicals early. We have a huge, uh, physical day where we open up the gym and we bring our athletes up that are willing to come up and I think it's we've only been charging like twenty dollars for a physical and they can come up and get all that taken care of so it doesn't slip anybody's mind because that's the biggest thing is they don't have that physical paperwork it's they're, they're not allowed to compete in athletics so if we've got a Braves fan out there who just can't make it to the game how would they go about being able to see their favorite team? So they can do it a couple ways. The, the popular way right now is our Community Braves Network. We actually have a link on our athletic website where they can go and they can click and it can take them right to the game. In fact, tonight, if they're a volleyball fan, they can go to our athletic website, click on that, it'll take them right to the game. Our athletic department has worked really hard uh, and getting the graphics and everything looking professional. I mean, the first time I saw it, I was really impressed. You know, it's like you're watching a, watching a college game. Uh, same thing for football. We have a, a really good broadcaster who's come in and he does a good play-by-play, -play, keeps everybody informed throughout the game. Uh, and then, of course, if you're just, you know, looking to see if we, hey, did we get a win, you can always go in and look at our schedules. We update our schedules in rank one. And uh, parents and fans can go in and look, hey, did they win last night? And they can go in and look at scores and things like that. So I see tonight you have on some Braves gear tonight. So if I needed to, to purchase some Braves stuff, where would I go to purchase that? Well, we actually set up something this year to where you can, again, go to our athletic website. Uh, we have a spirit store available for fans, uh, anybody in the community area. And... Uh, they can go in and we have a variety of different things. They can get polos, they can get t-shirts, they can get shorts, they can get hoodies. Uh, we tried to get a variety of, of logos that we use currently that, you know, they can kind of change up what they're, maybe they don't look like someone else, they want to just be them. So uh, there's a lot of options for them out there, but they can go on to our athletic webpage, click on that, go in. It's real simple. Uh, I believe that everything is shipped right to your door. So you have all that taken care of. Awesome. Yes, Good. Well, I appreciate you being here and I you appreciate bet. everything you do for athletics. Yes, ma'am. We're super proud of our Braves and I can't wait to go catch the end of that volleyball game tonight. So yes, ma'am. Me too. We will do that. And if there are some athletic questions that come up in a few minutes, we'll call you back over and let you answer those. But thank you for you being bet. here. You bet. Thank you. Okay. I think that we're going to shift to our um, question and answer portion of the night. And so we will be answering your questions as they come in. If you put a, a question in, then Mr. Welch is going to read that question for us and then we will be able to answer. At the moment, there are no questions. No there questions. is one comment from Mrs. Ackley at Neesmith. She says, that's awesome. And that's all we've got today. Okay, so if there are any questions out there, we encourage you to ask those. This is a great time for you to ask any questions um, and for us to be very transparent, open, and honest with you. This is our platform for allowing all of our community to, um, to get some feedback straight from uh, the folks that are in charge of these programs and, and straight from the district. So we would encourage you to ask any questions that you have. How many people do we have on right now, Mr. Welch? We have 32 watching. 
32 watching tonight. So uh, hopefully the 32 of you have, have some question of some sort that we can answer. We would love to do that. We do have uh, our first question just came in. Okay. Uh, Alex Viacana, I apologize if I'm getting that name wrong, uh, asked, could you get communication from the mayors of each city about what communities and phases they approve to be built? That way you guys are in the loop and have a plan for staffing. Absolutely. So actually I've started meeting with the mayors um, monthly. So um, either the mayor or they bring their city administrator or city staff member and we have lunch together and they bring in any information that they have on new developments um, or things that are going on within the city. I can tell you one really tricky thing and I'll ask for all of your help on this. That's all the things that are happening within the city limits or within um, the cities that are coming and talking to me. But what we're finding is there's also lots of things outside the city limits, uh, small parcels of land that are being sold or 100 acres here, 80 acres there, and that are being uh, sold to developers to be developed. And we don't really know about that unless someone just word of mouth Mention is, mentions that to me. So I found out about a couple of those just recently, 100 acres outside of city limits that, that are going to be developed. And so if you guys have any information, even if we already know about it, we would love to hear what you know about. I believe there's actually um, eight new subdivisions being developed um, within our district that we're looking at. Those vary in size. I found out today about one that's going to have 250 homes um, in the Levon area, and then we have some that have 4,500 homes. And so all of those add up, and so we really need any information that you guys have, but we are trying to collect that information, working with those mayors, and they're letting us know exactly what's happening, what's being approved by their city councils, so that we can prepare. Our demographer use that information to make the predictions about what's coming. And so on the, um, at the board workshop, the demographer will present a 10 year projection based on the model of all of those developments on what we're going to see for um, the district, which is where we got that within five years, we'll have over 6,000 kids um, and we'll have to make adjustments with staffing at that point. But, but I do appreciate that question because that allowed me a chance to talk a little bit about those meetings and also about getting information. If you have information out there about new development, please uh, share that information with the district. That's it right now. Uh, I did want to chime in because I got an email question about this. If you're currently looking to get our logos, they are free for use for anyone that is within the boundaries of Community ISD. You can go to communityisd.org slash logos and that will take you to where we have all of our logos for free. You can download them, use them, uh, as long as you follow the branding guide that is also linked in there. Totally free to use. Great. And if you have some great apparel, we'd love to see it. Yes, ma'am. At, at one of our games, cheering on our Braves. Do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, you mentioned the classrooms that are opening at the high school, what our plans are to celebrate that opening on the 25th? So we will have a groundbreaking ribbon cutting ceremony um, for that area for those new classrooms that we have there on October the 25th at, I'm only going to at six o'clock and so any of you that want to come and be a part of that we would love to have you there as we add on um, those additional classrooms and um, for those of you that aren't familiar with that um, that was projected to be done within a 10-year time span of adding on to our high school campus and um, that actually gets us up to a capacity of um, a thousand students and we are getting very close to that as we're in the high 800s right now. And so it is projected that we will be um, past that capacity within the next two years. So we will also be looking at what are we gonna do in the next two years to make sure that we have plenty of space for all of our high school students. Um, but we, we did add on eight classrooms and we'll start using those very soon. Uh, there are no more questions at the moment. No more questions. I would just encourage you, I still have not had a chance to meet a lot of people in the district. If you would like to sit down, I have an open door policy. You can uh, email my secretary 
at jessica.wofford at communityisd.org and she can set up a time that you can come in. We can sit down and talk about any concerns or questions or if you just need to share your information with me or just get to know me, I would love for you to set up an appointment to do that. So I encourage you to set up an appointment and come visit with me when you have time. All right, I believe that's it. We have no more questions tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. If we can do anything to improve these um, broadcasts or to provide additional information, please let us know. We want this to be beneficial to everyone that's watching. We appreciate you, and we will um, look forward to doing this again in a month. Thank you.